This is the Red All Over Show with me, Joe Beardsall, Craig Wood, Josh Atherton and Andy Simcox as we are talking about Barnsley's unexpected 2-0 win at Wigan and looking ahead to Cheltenham away this weekend. Let's get into it. Great then, gang. How are we all doing? We all predicted, well, everybody on last week's show predicted that we were going to lose to Wigan. And I did say, even though I did predict Wigan to win 3-0, if I'm if I'm being totally honest, I did say on last week's show that um, it would be very typical Barnsley, wouldn't it, for Barnsley to win this game when none of us expect him to get now out in it. And we won 2-0. <sighs> Andy, I mean, I'm happy about it, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I just didn't expect it. It was a good performance, ultimately, wasn't it? You know, at, at the start, Wigan pressed us and I thought, oh, to say, you know, they kept the ball and then pressed as well, and we weren't pressing. We didn't, we didn't press much. We uh, we dropped off. It's not what we, we we used to doing, and maybe maybe that's what we needed against against their press or what have you. And they had they had one good chance uh, early on from the um, the winger Humphreys, who I thought looked dangerous throughout more, more than any other. I thought that he looked really dangerous throughout. Um, I think they um, I cannot put it. They, they like they like to, they like to put a tackle in and get the flipping decision off the referee by fouling and then gain the decision. You know the thing with Cadden would just be beyond beyond comprehension. Quite that, funny, you know, isn't it? Puts it down the you know goes down the wing ways. Smith comes across. Matt Smith comes across. Takes him out. Takes everything with him and gets a free kick for his trouble. So that's I'm not going to mention referee again because he did a he did a good job sending their man off. And you know, people have got different views. Fifty-fifty should have been off, shouldn't he have been off? I don't know. I, th- I, th- I thought he should have been off. I'd have been upset if it had been our player that was sent off, because he part got the ball. But you know, you need to say he got the man before he got the ball, or he got the he got the ball, but he then took the man out because the ball didn't go flying away. Um, I think it, I think it was a, a reasonable decision. It's a decision I'm willing to take. Uh, I wish it'd been in penalty area, but you know that's probably expecting too much to get a penalty this early on in the season, or at any time during this season, to be truthful. Um, and it, it 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 changed the game because having looking, you know, looking really assured, Wigan suddenly started getting a bit nervy, to put it mildly. Um, and it has to be said in the first half, their goalkeeper made two outstanding double saves, absolutely outstanding double saves. I could. Have, I could have sworn we were going to score, you know, both of those occasions. So, you know, and and then of course, you know, off, on it went, and uh, we we grew into it. I thought Shepherd played really, really well at the back, um, and then a great ball in, you know, a great ball in towards the end of, you know, in the first half from Cotter, clipped it in, and just what we've all been saying for ages. So obviously we're taking credit for it. Um, Devante goes in front of his man to flick it in. He's not waiting at the back post for it to go over the top. He's moving towards the front and clips it in. And, you know, we're a goal. And so it won the, And then you think, oh, hell's bells. They come out and they start, you know, even with 10 men for us under a bit of pressure. But we, we weathered that. Um, we made decent substitutions in, in, in the end. And I thought John McAtee was absolutely <laughs> stunning when he came on. Um, obviously, I was cursing him when. You know, when the goalkeeper decided to edit behind himself, and um, at a difficult angle, he got a you know an, an open goal, but it were an hard angle, so I'm not. not well, talking. we'll give him credit. We'll give him that. We'll tried. give him that that it was a hard yeah. angle, and I think Joe was oh, quite was. Uh, upset with himself for, for not taking that away, but he definitely made it up was. for it with the with the goal. <laughs> oh, and then you know the, the beautiful play down the wing, and and um, you know Aiden Aiden Marsh controlled it beautifully, moved forward, looked up. Looked up nicely and um, clipped him in and assured, he didn't have to touch it until he stroked it in the net and absolutely assured goal. We also have to remember that our goalkeeper, Roberts, made a really good save in the second half um, that kept it at, at 1-0. So Definitely. I, I think we deserved it in the end. Um, and like you, like you said earlier, I, ter- I've been done the away end with uh, Charlie Keegan from uh, Central Wigan. I was flipping terrified. I mean that that's why I went four 0 because I thought, listen to him, you know, it, it, it's Manchester City under a, in in a different shirt, um, but yeah, well deserved. Well deserved. Some really strong performances because obviously the start of the match, there's no Callum Style starting, there's no uh, Liam Kitchen because I think it's I think it's a growing strain. And you're thinking it's it you know 
two of our more experienced players um, and leaders <laughs> not playing in them. Um, you feel the work, fear for the worst, but no, we got the best. <laughs> so that was good. Uh, Josh, they did want it. <laughs> they did want it. Yeah, Josh, it was a historic show last week. You weren't with us, mate. And I think it's, I'm pretty sure, and I say it's historic because I'm pretty certain it was the first time ever in the history of Red All Over that four people on this show predicted a defeat for Barnsley and you weren't there. <laughs> So yeah, exactly. I don't think that's ever happened. You would have been proud of us, mate. That everybody, everybody was really, uh, really. Is is that the? I don't know what the term is, but you know, no, it's been happy. Really He'd have been happy. It's good to see that I've started to infiltrate all of you now. Do you know what I mean? You're all starting to. You start I mean, we come round and see and see the light or the dark. We all got egg on his face because Barnsley went a one two 0 So yeah, <laughs> so. it was. Yeah, it's good to see that you all come around to see to see it in my in my view. Um, no, I thought it, it, it were a good performance. I mean, um, I don't know if it was a sending off or not. It's a dubious one, but to be honest, it's lazy defending from their centre their center half. Instead of coming to meet it, it hesitates and stum- and and waits and doesn't expect Devon A to make that run. And it's lazy defending. So for just for that for for that alone, it's a sending off for me because that's it's poor. He, he needs to come and meet uh, and meet the ball from that perspective, and I think that sort of it settled us. Then I'm glad we scored sort of as quick as we did after the red card as well, because <laughs> no, most of the time when teams go out of ten, it is you you are then expected to go on and win uh, and win that game. And obviously, with a patchy form which we've had, it's not it, it, it's one of them that can work against you in a way as well of being the expectations now there to go and win. You're playing against a side who I think without that points deduction would be top of the league. Yeah, yeah. So it's not it, it it's not an easy team to be playing. Um, so even with ten, they are they, they are capable. I think they showed that when the couple of times which did break forward, it they had some we had some dangerous moments. But I do think we managed it well, um, and I think we set up a little bit differently as well, as sort of breaking out on the counter instead of constantly trying to press and getting picked off and pulled apart. It gave us a little bit more structure and solidity um, defensively, which was nice to see. And we had sort of a, pla- a, a platform to build from, and then. The pace in which we did move the ball back to front, especially in transition, it led to the sending off, um, and it obviously led to second goal as well of sort of how quick moved the ball from back to front. Um, I think the same thing happened for the goal which Devante um, scored, but was offside. Again, we moved the ball forward really quickly with players um, in their positions nice and high, and it just creates it's even in terms of it's it's a three on three or a two on two. In them situation, it's all about beating your man as opposed to trying to break for a team that's got ten behind the ball. We've always struggled with that. We struggled with that last season. It's just it's difficult to do. So I think setting up and playing the counter definitely worked. To, it plays to a strength as well. Young side, quicker, fitter. You can get up and on the pitch a bit easier. It's yeah, it was a good, it was a good away performance and a good a good performance against ten men as well. Definitely needed as well after what had been a really tough week for Barnsley, losing obviously Peterborough midweek, then Oxford. You know, again, feeling a bit doom and gloom, weren't it? Like it was going to be a bad start to the season, um, and then obviously getting that getting that win in has has definitely moved us up to to mid table and makes things feel a, a little bit more rosy. Uh, Craig, from a Wigan point of view, uh, so Andy thinks sending off. Josh thinks maybe, but he's he's saying if if the defender had done better, then he he shouldn't have been in that position. I'm on the fence. Um, oh, that's a I think it, oh, no. that's a new one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of them for me, you know. If it's against you, you you you're saying, "Come on, yellow card." I think he got a bit of the ball. If it's for if it's for you, you're kind of like, "Yeah, maybe it's a red." I think it's an in between. On a, on another day, it's a yellow, that but on some days, it's a red. That's how uh, I see it. If we got the man first, it was straight red, uh, denying a goal scoring opportunity. I don't think it's a clear cut that he got the ball first. I don't think he. I don't know if he got the man first. Either way, he gave the the, the decision to the referee to make. And when you're in that position, uh, if the referee thinks that you've got the man first, then you're off. You know, I mean, I'd rather my defender trust my keeper, to be honest with you, um, and just try and catch up. You know, uh, I thought he played well up until that happened as well. I thought it was fairly solid. But um, yeah, that was that was beginning and end really at game for them. Um, apart from Humphreys up wing, I thought played well lively. Also, um, they had. The, that midfielder, I forgot what his name is now. Um, young kid, he, he was fairly. Um, he was that Smith? Down. Smith no, was it? No. Oh no. Um, 
Oh, Andy should know. He did away in last week, and he knows <laughs> all players now. He's I, a big I, can't remember. I think I think it began with Al. I forgot what his name is now. Anyway, but um, I help us, we Wigan were, fans, help us. <laughs> yeah, well, I could probably find it, but um, yeah, I think we were we were we deserved the win in end of the day because ah, oh, Callum Lang, that's it. He was up and down, up and down, up and down. <clears throat> I've been. Fairly robust in my opinion on our formation this season. I think playing styles behind the front two is a problem, and in this in this game, instead of um, styles pressing with the forwards, he actually dropped back into the into the midfield three, and then that allowed us to then focus on their fullbacks when their fullbacks got forward. So I thought we defended a lot better. Um, you know, styles weren't playing, didn't you, until he came on late on. Yeah, right. I thought. John, yeah, I thought. Are you two going to start at... rowing again? No, <laughs> no. But when he does John... come on, he normally plays it a lot further up. Yeah, he does. He does. You're right. He right. uh, tends to drop back a bit more, which is what I want to see from the start of the game. Anyway, um, I thought Shepard was solid at back. I thought he had a really good game for a really young kid. You know, um, I don't think anybody when we signed him thought he'd really be able to put a dent in this starting eleven. But for me, he's playing better than Kitchen at minute, and um, ultimately, I think he should. He deserves to keep the state team if he's playing better than he, he deserves it. But also, I, I don't want anybody to get too excited about beating beating Wigan when they're down to ten men, because <clears throat> we should have done a lot better than just two 0 In my opinion, I thought we the chances we had, and when we've got to third, the amount of times we slowed down. And didn't find the key pass. I thought we could have we could have probably put a lot more past them. Um, but McAtee looked well when he came on, um, and all, all together it, it was a good performance. Not overwhelming. Obviously, the red card helped, but it's a good team to put in as rear view now because it's not a team when you're struggling or when you need your team to bed together. It's not a team you want to be going to go away to. So they really let us off up there. So. Yeah, um, I enjoyed it, and their goalkeeper, I thought, were out, what man of match, I thought he was fantastic to say he's a young kid. So, yeah, definitely what we needed. Uh, Reds, let us know what you think to it in the comments, and as always, get your prediction in for our prediction competition. It's Cheltenham versus Barnsley. We're going to get the youngins on soon to uh, predict that. Um, I, I just wanted to mention Devante Cole. I mean, just to give him some some praise, I think five goals in in his first five league games. Obviously, got a hat trick against Port Vale. Andy, it's been some start for him, hasn't it? It has indeed. You know, he's he's, he's up there with some of the others, isn't he? Up, up at the top, as far as goal scoring is concerned. And his overall play is better. You know, he's, he's, he's moving. And although he's not, you know, like, like he did when he was playing with James Norwood, pressing really quickly, really, uh, he blocks, he blocks, with his pressing, he, he blocks a lot of passes out. He, he makes... He makes some of the defenders make decisions about where they're going to pass it because he's always and then he then he goes quick and he's got on the end of a few things you know when he's when he's when he's put them under some pressure, um, so you can't you can't argue you can't argue with the way he started. I thought he might struggle a bit you know without uh, without his oppo at the side of him. You know, I thought he might be a bit like me without Smithy. Well, he's, he's done it. You know, obviously I'm better without Smithy than if you say the same analogy. Um, I'd also say this. Let me tell you. This. I thought Jack Shepherd, as as Craig says, were outstanding. There's very few players I've seen that can play a ball up the wing better than he's been doing of these little couple of matches he's played. Transfer deadline day coming up. Obviously, we've got McAtee in. We've said uh, that you know we think he looks like a decent signing from from first look. Needs a bit more time. Josh. What positions do we need to sign in before the deadline day finishes? I think, is it Friday, Friday night, 11 o'clock? Yeah, Friday. They always change, I always forget. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm not sure this show will be long enough for um, where I think we need to improve at the minute. Um, Ouch, def- okay. <laughs> definitely, definitely centre half um, massively. Uh, obviously, we're trying to replace Mads, but the issue we've got at the minute is injuries. You've got Kundi out, you've got McCarthy on his way back from ACL. We've got Benson on his way back from um, an injury as well. If we sign players, we end up with a massively swelled squad. If we went out and signed two cent- centre-halves now, we'd have the new French lad, we'd have Kunde, we'd have McCarthy, we'd have Lapata, we'd have 
Shepherd, we'd have Kitchen, and then if we signed two more, we'd have we'd have what's that eight centre halves to play in three positions. You, we're going to end up with a massively swell squad. You're going to end up with players who are no, not not getting game time. Going to be unhappy. It's a little bit of a tricky situation which we are in at the minute. I do think we need new cent- a centre half to sort of bridge that because there's unknowns within it. Of McCarthy played a game, two games before he did his ACL, so we'd, we're not entirely sure on where he could fit. He could come in and be a perfect replacement for Mads. He might not be able to cut it at this level. We don't know, especially coming up from ACL. It's a big injury. It's a long injury as well. Kunde has the aerial prowess of him, but not necessarily the ball playing aspect of it. So Composure. the way. The 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 way in which we're gonna have to replace Mads is probably within out of two players. It's gonna take two two players to do it. One to sort of bring that aerial uh, threat, and also one that's gonna have to play to to play the ball. I don't think necessarily we've got that ball playing centre centre half yet. I won't mind Kitchen being there, but if you bring Kitchen into the middle, you lose him on that left hand side to overload and overlap, which is one of his key threats. So you can't you can't bring him out of that position if he is there. Um, so I think centre half is. Left wing back is contentious for me. I've seen a few people saying that we need a new left wing back. Not entirely sure because we've got the flexibility and versus a player like Callum Siles is perfect for the flexibility and versatility. We know he can play left wing back, we know he can play well there, we know he can play attacking midfield, he can play well, he can play well in central midfield. He could probably anchor if we need him to anchor in front of back four, uh, back three, sorry. So not entirely sure if we need a left wing back. Again, I also don't agree with if you have a left wing back, right wing back, you can play both positions. It's the same, you're just on opposite side. The only thing it does differently is means if Jordan Williams out there is coming underneath and he's cutting inside at every opportunity. Left wing back, not too sure. I think midfield's fine. Um, especially if Callum Style stays for the end of the window. Just again, it just adds to that um solidness. Connell's coming back from injury as well, um, into that. So that midfield rotating wise. It's probably one of the strongest in in the league, to be honest. And then up front, it's just it's what I like to see is something different, someone that's a little bit more a, a, a bit bigger. And especially if we're going to play in the counter, we're going to need someone to hold the ball up up top. Who's up? Who's up there? Devante got better at it last season, um, especially from that first season championship. He got better at using his body and protecting the ball and holding the play up. But also, he can turn and run in behind. So. Do you want him to do that where he's probably going to be the quicker striker that, that, that we've got to run in behind? And he's he's good at getting into some space. You look at the goal that he's scored this season, it's when he's been running sort of on that last man coming off the shoulder. So I don't it, we can see that's not his game, um, but he has got the versatility to do it. So I like to see a big striker to come in just to give us a little bit more option because we've got Waters um, that also plays off the shoulder. Devante plays off the shoulder. Um, it's just whoever comes in needs to fit the profile and the blueprint of the team. So it needs to be able to move, needs to be able to press. There's no point bringing a big six foot eight striker that's two hundred pound and it's just a lump. We need someone that's also mo- mo- mobile. Yeah, into, not Smithy then. Into not a target man. You don't like that word, <laughs> do you? Tar- Josh? Not a no, target man. It's, it's a word that annoys me. Um, <laughs> but it's someone that. At least if we get off the pitch, because to be honest, Norwood weren't the tallest, but he got it all in ball up. He was a good target man. Um, but he just, he just didn't have the oh, height. You've said it. Five, five quid height. swear, Jar, for that. <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't have the height as a traditional target man of being like a Kiefer Moore who's six foot five, six six. Um, so I think they're the two positions: centre, centre half and for, and forward. And I think it's it's just difficult because of the injuries and the players to come back in, and sort of the unknown uncertainty around it as well because different combinations of defenders are going to give you different results. Like Kundi might come in and next to, if he plays set centrally with Kitchen and John Williams at side of him, it might look like a world beater compared to when he had Mads at the side of him and things like that. So it's, yeah. it's difficult. It's, it's, I think it's a really great point that you made there, Josh, around the defence because it's a tricky situation because like you say, if one of them lads comes back and they play well and they get in, you might have just signed someone for the sake of signing someone just because actually you felt like, oh, well, what do we do? But, you know, at the same time, I we mean, don't sign suppose... someone and that doesn't happen, then yeah. Yeah, then the fans will be left saying, well, come on, why didn't the board sign anybody? So it is a tricky situation. It's not an easy I think, one. I think also on that, though, the trade-off is you get a stronger bench from it, though. Like, you look at it now, yeah. like, you look at the players we actually brought on, now Phillips is back. You can bring on Callum Styles, who you'd imagine are walking to most League One sides, um, if not Championship sides. So I think within it, there's also the 
the, the the better aspect is it's going to be developing the team and bringing the team on in terms of quality. So it might be someone that's playing now that drops the bench. Like, Actually, that's not bad. We've got Lapata, for example, coming off the bench. We've got Jack Shepard coming off the bench because no one can do a job. It's not sort of an unknown of being like, it's a 17-year-old in the academy. Like J- Jasper Moon that season when he just got chucked in into the first team and he just felt so sorry for him um, in the way yep. he developed more handled um, from us. So, yeah, I think at least if we do do that, you'd hope that it at least comes with a strengthening of, the, of um, the quality. And if we did, then it's trying to ship, move play, other players on because that's going to be the trade-off of it. Yeah, I think I think we're, from my point of view, I think a new centre-half, a new forward and let them, yeah, okay, you might have a few extra players, but let them sort of battle it out to see who gets the first team between now and January. And then you can always loan a couple out in January if, if they're not in and around the team. And hopefully that... That keeps morale up and uh, gets you the best best outcome. So I do think we need to sign a centre half and, and a forward. Craig, it looks like we might have missed out on Sam Numby from the reports. Uh, I know we discussed him as being a potential person that Barnsley might have been interested in. It was all rumour mill, but um, it now sounds like <laughs> again rumour mill that we might be looking at Rotherham United's forward Joshua Kiodi. Um I've seen that knocking around. Whether there's any, again, any truth in it, we don't know, Reds. It's just what we, you know, it's the usual social media ramblings. But um, what do you think? Um, Player that you'd be interested in? Is, is a, is a, I think he's six foot two, and he's six foot two, six foot three. I think he gives a different option. Also, he's, he's played at this level before, and, uh, and he's not so much as an unknown quantity as some of the signers we've had this season. So I, I'm all for, I'm all for fetching on anybody that I think can add something to the squad, and I, like I say, I think him and Devante up top. I think they'll, they'll they'll have a good dynamic. I think he seems like a young, fit, tall lad who's actually got a fair bit of pace about him. So I think he's just wanting an opportunity because looking through his career, he's been a bit part of everywhere he's been. He's never been able to really be the shining light, and I think if anybody's going to gain that opportunity, it'll be us. Um, but I think I think we've got a lot of players like that in our squad, just players that we we know are close, not quite there, and but it's them players that cost you at the end of the season. It's the play you need to have players that you know are going to do the job for you. You know what I mean? And I, I feel less and less confident every season we get just uh, uh, just non league players coming in. Now I know there is some good starlets that come in, but it's just not knowing. Do you that think that sometimes though it's a little bit? Of a, because we you know we talked about Jack Shepard who's come from non-league, and I think a lot, you yeah. know, a lot of fans' perception is is he going to step up into the the first team because he's from non-league? But we've seen it so many times now where we do see non-league players come into the team at first, fans are not sure, and they go on to you know well, to to it's, slot it's, into it's the team, play really well, and and go and move further up. And two years later, we're upset that they've gone to champ. I'm just sick of this try. Every every transfer we know just feels like I'm, we're going in to the sand. We're sieve. And we're just there sifting, just sifting all day, just trying to find that one piece of gold. Now, it, but <laughs> if, great, yeah, but, yeah, but if we're going to get one piece of gold out of every nine players we sign, then that's a waste of time. It's a waste of money and it's a waste of effort. So we need to get, if we're going to do it, we need to get better at it, you know. So, but like I say, I, I'm, I'm not going to write, write, Callied off of the board off because they have signed some good players over recent years, but I, yeah, we need a striker. For me, centre half is a must. We don't. I think Lapata can play on the right hand side of that defence. I think he looks adaptable to be able to go forward with the ball a little bit, like Kitchen does. He seems to have that in him. We need that destroyer at the back, that big man who can be physical, can head a ball at, can marshal that defence and can see the game. We need a captain type player. That's what we need. Somebody that can marshal that back line. Because the game we watched at home, the last home game, I have never seen a defence get ripped apart like that. I mean, in a long time. Against Oxford, the, the 3-1 Absolutely is that what you're talking about. Yeah. got destroyed. Nobody knew where they were meant to be. Like I said, in the previous match before that, there were just lots of pointing going off. You should be there. You should be there. You should be there. No, you should know where you should be. You know, we've done That's that show, Greg, don't you? Fans. You know, we've done that show and we've won away at the team that were at the top yeah. of the table. Of the, you, you, you know, we've already done that show. 
So you know, no, but I'm just saying why a we harsh. need a certain cyber centre back. I think you just I think you're being playing a bit against harsh. ten men is a completely different game. <laughs> you know, it's some, it it's sometimes it's sometimes hard. I remember Doncaster years ago, we had Darren Moore sent off and hammered him after not looking like hammered him. We went to ten men and absolutely hammered him four 0 So you know, like, I th- I think we've signed a few players, and sometimes you, you can say possibly, and I think no, I think probably it's too many at once, and you can't. If you sign players with potential, and I think there's some potential, here, and I think there's some potential with Oli Shaw, and I think there's definitely some potential with uh, with Andy Dallas and, and and some of the others. But you can't put them all in the first team and expect them to realise that potential right at the start. They need that experience and that help to come on. And I think that's what crippled in playing for us, crippled Jasper, because we're expecting somebody with a, a good deal of potential to not have potential but be the finished article and it, it's impossible couldn't it, it couldn't be so I do like the way I know he's been injured but I do like the way where you know help we've been helping Aiden come on and and, and Jallo and all you know I'm, I'm expecting up front I'm expecting to see more of Jallo I'm really excited about seeing um uh uh John uh, John McAtee because I think he he could add something really different up front he's like a striker but not a striker not a midfielder you could say number ten, but you know he was there and he made the runs and he went at him. He went directly at him. I know it's I know it's ten men, but that that don't tell us me no. But you've got to have that experience to assist the potential. lapata has got potential, definitely Shepherd's got potential. But you can't just chuck all potentials in and say off you go, chuck them all in and expect them all to swim all at once. It can't. That's why we've said a number of times, and I'm you know we Josh on this um, some experience that bitter experience. That's why it was disappointing about Norwood. Can I just um, add as well? Like we are meant to be. We'll try and be a bit happier. We won. Yeah, we, no, we won. Just, this is this is where I'm coming from though. Why I say the things I say. We are meant to be playoffs or going to to go up automatically. We should be cherry picking from the teams below us, not two leagues below us. We should be we should be the big shark fishing. I don't what, care where what, they come do, from. Why, why do you players. feel that? Why do you feel that is, Craig? What What is your because every successful team that? that's ever got out of this division, that's what they've done, except a few outliers. You look at Wigan hmm. repeatedly go up, Rotherham re- repeatedly. But go you up. never have a right, do you, to go up? It's it's all no, about no, no, who you that, sign, who you that, play, but, and we but, know but, that financially we're not as if, you know we're not in the top budgets anymore necessarily. And right, Alfie May, why are we? Not, why did we not get him? There's a reason, though. If we're going to get him, we're going to get him. Um, when you say there's big sharks, the bigger sharks than us. Like, we wanted Sam yeah, Numbi. Yeah. We want Sam, Sam Numbi, who looks like he's going to pick Rotherham, because we're in the division above us. It's, whilst it's easy to say that, but we're going to lose out to... There's always someone bigger than you. And that's what I think that's why we've ended up going down the approach that we have gone. I just think we're um, making it harder it. for a sense by acting like we have to be the ones that have to fetch through potential all the time. It's fine to have a couple of players that you want to bring through as potential, but it just seems like we're constantly just renewing squads all the time, just fetching players through, hoping that they'll become good. And Callum then Styles what losing potential. them anyway. So Callum Styles what potential. The Man, thing is, still yeah. what potential. No, I'm not saying we've never we've never done it. I'm saying I'm getting annoyed by the fact that we keep being that team but never going up. You know, it's like same with Mads. We finished we're, him. We have been promoted, you know. Remember? Yeah, but we also have been we got relegated. to Wembley last year. <laughs> think on. We, 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 the, I think like the problem is the there's such a <laughs> yeah, there's such a gulf between top of League One and Championship for me, and I think it's with the finances and and the playing the the sort of level of, of standard as well. It's so difficult to, for us to break past that yo-yo team of League One Championship yeah. and get there and stay there, and that's the, that's got to be the aim for us is to get up and stay there. Uh, and obviously it's frustrating because it's a second season in this league and we, we're looking at it thinking it's going to be difficult. You know, a new manager, like you said, Craig, lots of new potential, but not the finished article yeah. in terms of the squad. Are we going to be challenging for the top six? So I do get your frustration. I think that it's it, there's a lot to it and there's a lot of factors. And I think it is think hard for Bar- the teams is, like Barnsley to, to, to get up. And I think to, that this team yeah. isn't as good as what we had last year at the start. We know how difficult it was then. I just think it's just going to be more difficult if we don't act in these next two days. Well, we'll see what happens. I do agree that I think we need to sign a couple of players. Um, I think we also need to be try to be patient and give uh, Neil Collins and the lads time because it's when they're coming in, 
<laughs> yeah, when they're coming in, it is it is difficult, and they need a few games. And we are seeing we are seeing some fruit from it uh, so far. So, right, let's get the little ones on. Uh, the twins, George and Isaac, little Alan and Andy. Here they are with their predictions for Cheltenham away. We've got Cheltenham on the weekend. Hopefully, we can carry on the wins after the after we're going away. What do you think the score's going to be? I think it'll be. Four nil Barnsley. I'm thinking it'll be five nil to Barnsley. If you think you're better than predicting them, let's get it in the comments down below. You Reds! There we go. That's the lads' predictions. Expecting big wins. Love it, lads. That's what we like to see. Big wins for Cheltenham away. Andy, so we beat Wigan 2 0. None of us expected to win. Cheltenham, bottom at league, not scored a goal in the first five games. They're having a, a bit of a struggle, obviously, like we've, uh, we know Alfie May moved on from them. He was a big player for them last season. Uh, so a really difficult start for Cheltenham Town. Um, so you'd like to think we can win this one, but you just never know. <laughs> we it's, it's, fr- it's frightening, isn't it? It's absolutely frightening. No, if you if you include the uh, the Carabao Cup again, that you know they lost lost to um, to Birmingham as well. They've not. I, I had a little look to see who were their goal scorers, and nothing came up because they hadn't scored a goal this season. So that's a worry, isn't it? That's a real, real worry. Um, uh, and they've conceded. If you again take take out uh, take out uh, Birmingham because that don't really count. Don't know what side either team put out. Um, they've conceded six goals in five matches, so they've not conceded many. You know the one point that they've got were a nil nil. So you know away to Portsmouth was oh, oh no mugs. So it's not you know it. It's all statistics. If you if you look and think, you know, they, they haven't scored all season, then it's going to be easy, isn't it? We're going to win. If it's 1-0, 2-0, 4-0, it's going to be easy, isn't it? But when you think that they've only conceded six and three were in one match against um, uh, against Bolton, they've not conceded many, you know, six goals in five matches. It's it's not many. So it could be, could be very tight. It could be very, very tight. So, you know, it'll be nice. If he plays, it'll be nice to see Ben Williams play because we've... Um, you know, we liked Ben Williams. He were he were a, he were a sub last week, but he came on. So it'd be nice to see Ben, because um, not that we need, not that we need cover at left wing back, do we, Josh? And I don't think we do. I'm only kidding. Um, you know, I'm glad for Ben that he's um, that he moved. You know, after his injury, and he's you know, he's got a club that he's going to play for. I hope he plays more because we like him. You know, we like him. So that that would be nice. Um, but I, I would hope, I would hope that we'll be buoyant after. Um, after our win at Wigan, if we're not buoyant after beating Wigan, man, you were we buoyant when, when we beat Port Vale? Don't know. We didn't seem to be. Um, let's hope that we're buoyant because we ought to be. And you know, and then you know we've got the we've got a, 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 a little game after that, and then a break. So I'm hoping that we'll get to know you know some of the players that do we need a centre half? Do we need a striker? We've got a lot of centre halves that are injured. I hope that we've got some idea of when where they're at and when they're likely to come back. So we've got two weeks off, so they'll have some idea. Um, but I, ex- I expect, if I'm honest, then I, you know I'm really loath to. I'll, I'll wait with my prediction. I'm really loath to predict we're going to win because uh, yeah, it worries me. I'm going to wait for Josh to see where he says because I think well, he'll, yeah, uh, he'll change your mind. Might for be you. nil. Um, could be nil nil at this rate. Josh, I'm going to set you up lovely for this one. Um, you know, teams that have not won in a few games, we all know that they've got to win eventually. And that's the thing that worries me about this game. Coming into a game where a team's not won in five games, it's very easy to think, OK, well, if they've not won in five, they've not scored a goal, nice, easy three points then, lads, isn't it? Mm, never never works that way. <laughs> it would be nice if it did, though, for once. Do you know what I mean? Wouldn't it be nice? No, it is, it is one of them. It's... Uh... <sighs> They all obviously they want to get off the mark and get and get moving and get and get going and get their season like up and running. But it is it's one that you like to think you can win, especially when you look at last season, first time game of the season, we're going to Cheltenham and we really, really struggled. It took a a very good solo effort from uh, Luke Thomas to get us over the line. And up until that, if it that was the quality and difference between it, I didn't think there much between us on that day, to be honest. Um, so it is it is difficult, but when you look at how much they turned to Alfie May for goals last season, he basically carried them to what position that, that they were in, and losing him is massive for them. Um, and you can see you can see how it's how it's shown. Not scored all season, no points. It's 
it's difficult. Well, they have got the one point. They did get a draw against Pompey. Sorry, let's yes, not let's did. not get, take that away from them. It's already it's already hard enough at the minute. Everyone seems to get a draw at Portsmouth at the minute. Um, yeah, I think it is. It's difficult because then you're relying on your defence to be solid and hope that you can nick that one goal because chances are coming few, few and far between. The conversion's not not there either. So difficult for them, and obviously they are due a win, which it's just it's never. I'd rather them come off back of a win. Um, and then players rather than not have won all season, which makes it, yeah, it's just one of them where you think it's not, it's it's just so Barnsley as well to to lose this. It'd be the most Barnsley thing to happen ever. Beat Wigan, we could have beat Wigan if they had fourteen players, but we just, we won't beat Cheltenham if they if they get two sent off. I guarantee that we'll lose. <laughs> it's just, it's just oh, we gotta love you, Josh. Uh, Craig, it's interesting because when you look at it, obviously the 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 Peterborough and Oxford games particularly were were games that were disappointing. Obviously, the work as we lost, but you know, particularly in the Oxford game, the performance got got us all a bit down. But if we were to win this one, that's you know, it's it's not. I wouldn't say that's been a bad start. To be fair, it's it's pretty similar to a start last season. If we if we beat Cheltenham, yeah, it's it's gradually getting there, isn't it? So. Um... Yeah, it it is reminiscent of last season. I'd stop it as a better ending this time. Um, but I, I, well, well, thankfully, I, Wednesday can't beat us in playoff final this time, so that's one one, one silver lining. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think Cheltenham have um, pulled the penny trees this season. I think that I, th- I think they're probably going to go down. In in uh, I think Alfie May kept them up, um, and Michael Duff year before that as well with his uh, tactical ex- expertise. Which isn't working too well at Swansea at the minute, but um, yeah, I, I, we should we've got to beat them. I mean, we did concede against them last season, ended up beating them four 0 and one 0 So we need to, we need to put it this way: if we if we get anything less than a win, that was going to be really disappointing, really disappointing. So uh, we'll you're not see. going to be angry, Craig. You're just going to be disappointed. Oh, I'm going to be fuming, mate. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We don't want that. We don't want that for Craig, do we? We want him to be happy this yeah, weekend. It. So, Craig, what's so, your prediction? Um, I'm going to be reserved. I'm not going to go over the top. I'm going to say two 0 I think. I think. I think that I like their goalkeeper though, uh, Southwood. So, but um, yeah, I think. I think we'll. Um, I think we'll get a couple past them. I don't think they've got much in the tap, but I think the defense is pretty decent. So, yeah, I'll just. I'll say two 0 I feel a little bit guilty for predicting Barnsley to lose last week. Sorry, lads. You know, just Wigan, they were top of the league. It's not like me, is it? It's just not in my DNA. I usually predict us to win most of the time. So for that reason, I'm going to go for a big 5-0 win to Barnsley this weekend. Sorry, Cheltenham. Um, But I think that we'll, uh, yeah, starting to get it together, be full of confidence after beating Wigan. uh, And I'm going to go for a 5-0 win. Um, I nearly gave Cheltenham a goal, but I'm I'm just being mean now, so 5-0. Josh, come on, bring us back down to earth. <laughs> um, bold to say you were reserved by saying a win there, Craig, to be honest. That is by far very, very positive for me. It's not your level of reserved, is no, it, Josh? No, I was going to say that's... that's, uh, it's, that's it's a reserved win. <laughs> <laughs> that's an outstanding level of confidence in my book. Um, no, I, I agree. Have you met Joe? <laughs> <Is that sad? laughs> Um, no, I think for me as well, I agree with Craig. It is one of them of if we don't win, it's it feel it'll be very disappointing not not to win because it's if we are serious about being contenders this season, these are sides that you need to be beating and you need to be picking up the points there. It, it when you beat these teams, it means you can also afford to lose to those around you. Um, and it'll sort of make up for losing to Peterborough, for example, and things like that because you look at the fact that. We lost. Where we beat Port Port Vale seven nil, and then two weeks later they were a point above us, and it meant nothing in the grand scheme of things and stuff like that. So, I'm gonna go with one uh, one nil Barnsley. You've gone for a win though, Josh. I have gone for a win. I think I, I do think I, I think Craig's got a point. Keep their keeper is uh, solid and good and. When you look at the Wigan keeper the other day, he had a world so Just we're gonna one. Of, it's gonna be one of them games where we play really well and should be five or six in front, but we're venturing. also uh, Peterborough's goalkeeper. We could do not but come up against good goalkeepers this season. We've had one good that's for us and all though. Liam, well, oh, Liam Roberts yeah, has been outstanding. Good, yeah. yeah, it's been outstanding, hasn't he? 
Uh, Andy, come on, finish us off then, mate. What, what are we going for you? Are we going to have a full house of wins this week? That'd be nice after oh. after four predicted defeats last week. <laughs> we've soon we've soon yeah. turned around. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving you some thought. Their goal, uh, their goalkeeper has been consistently the um, their, their best player. So as Josh said, that you know that, but he's had to be anti. You know, he's had to. Be. He's, he's still picked it out at net six times. I agree in only five matches, but you know, all I would say is that against Wigan. Their goalkeeper tickle. He made some stunning saves, like I said earlier, three or two double saves that we normal goalkeeper, if you like, would go in. So I can't see that Cheltenham are going to have a defence that is going to have a goalkeeper as good as as good as Tickle was last week. So I, th- I think I, th- I think he's going to get a bit used to it. I think they'll put up a, a spirited resistance, and I understand that they're going to try and they're going to try, but. Where we're trying to win, they're they're in a position where they've actually got to try and get a goal first. They haven't got a goal. So, you know, that's got to be a name to score. And I don't think they're going to manage it. If we play like we played against Wigan, they're not going to score a goal. So I'm with Craig. It's going to be, I think, I'm hoping and expecting. No, expecting, I'm not hoping. I'm expecting it's going to be 2-0 to uh, to the Reds. 2-0 well, to the Reds. There to, we go. To us, because they're ready and all. To us. Oh, yeah. you know, wherever yeah, just we good are. to clarify. Good the to whites, clarify, the blacks, Andy. the whites, the blacks, <laughs> wherever, wherever we're going to be, the stars, uh, the Barnsley stars, call them that. <laughs> oh, no, please, please, no, don't let that stick. <laughs> as, a, <laughs> as always, guys, get your predictions in for Andy's prediction competition. Three points if you get the scoreline back on, one point if you get uh, that you correctly predict win, draw, or loss, and absolutely note if you get it wrong. Uh, to finish off the show, just to give you a quick reminder, I'm sure you're already aware that this Sunday kicks off the women's team season. We're really excited about this. Uh, yeah, quite a few of us are going to be going to this game, uh, me, me included, and hopefully going to be doing a bit of filming for it all over to, to mark this, what's going to be a, a historic day for Barnsley. So we're really excited for that. Uh, come on, we're cheering on all, uh, all the all the girls. Um, it's going to be kicking off at 2 p.m. So yeah, get yourself ready for that. I think, is it? Is it free for season ticket holders? Am I right in saying? Yeah, we've got some nods. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to find that information, yeah, but um, it sounds like it might be. So uh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, two p.m. at Oakwell, uh, Alnwick Town is who they're playing. So it should be exciting to to get Anik, after. Anik, Anik. Joe, seen from Northumberland. Anik. I don't know, mate. They I do don't know about Yorkshire, do I? York, Anik it's Rum, not... legendary Anik Rum, Anik Castle, where they filmed. And it is where they filmed Harry Potter. The, some of the earlier, is it? the early films, Harry Potter. They filmed, they filmed at Annick Castle. Yeah. So you didn't think you were going to get that fun facts about Annick? I mean, I can't pronounce it, but Andy saved me there. So there we go. Uh, so hopefully ah, we'll catch it. <laughs> they'll, they'll be magician. They'll be magicians. That team. They'll be magicians. <laughs> well. We'll, we'll catch it. We'll catch it on Sunday. Hopefully, if you're there and say hello to us. Uh, otherwise, we'll catch you next week um, to talk all about the Cheltenham game. So catch you next Wednesday. You Reds.